Hey guys, welcome to this new video. Today we are going to a coffee tour. So actually this is a, a place where you will have the small animal, the whistle, that is eating the bean and that gonna kind of pull it. And this is a tradition of the region. So right now we are in Dalat and this is exactly the place. Uh, we are coming actually here, they are uh, growing uh, Arabica coffee. So that's why I wanted to see, check a little bit how is those kind of quality beans that has been uh, eaten and uh, pulled by those animals. So let's go for the tour now. When the coffee turns into a red color, mm -hmm. like this, they are sweet and tasty, mm -hmm. just like a normal fruit. That's mm -hmm. why we look at the coffee. Okay, um, can we eat it as human? Or yes, also? yes we can. Uh, let's see that they... Mm -hmm. When the weasel eat the coffee, they are very clever. They will just spit out the red skin meat on the floor, swallow the whole beans. Mm. This is a rubber cat coffee, so not only there are two beans in one cherry. Mm -hmm. You can see it right here. And uh, the weasel, they just uh, swallow the two beans here. Mm -hmm. uh, they digest the sweet flesh here. The mm -hmm. flesh is very thin, sweet, tasty, mm -hmm. and slippery. So the beans go straight to the weasel's stomach. They cannot break the beans, mm -hmm. and after a couple of hours eating the cherries, they will pass the whole beans up with the mm -hmm. chocolate. Mm -hmm. So okay. that what we would call it to make weasel coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and what we can eat here is the flesh. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you want, you can take the red cherry here and you can try it. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. try. <laughs> so 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 nowadays this is the harvesting season. Yeah, right now it's the harvesting oh, no. season. And so the animals can eat uh, either arabica bean and robusta. Or? All types. Of All coffee. types. Yeah. Okay. But uh, in this area, we you know it is around like one thousand four hundred meters above sea level, so the climate here is just perfect for arabica coffee. Mm. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. In Vietnam, there are about like ninety five percent of coffee is robusta, which mm -hmm. is very strong. So five percent of uh, oh, arabica. Have, yeah, coffee in this right here in this highland. Normally in December, you know, this time of the year, we got a lot of red cherries, but we cannot harvest all of them for the weasels because we just feed them like twice a week uh, with the coffee, you know. So the coffee will just turn into black color. Mm -hmm. uh, when they turn into red, we have to harvest them in about one week. After one week, they slowly turn into black. And when they turn into black color, the weasel will not eat it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, we just leave it there and they will just fall down the ground and turn into okay. a young coffee tree, I think you say. Mm -hmm. Weasel, they just select by themselves the best coffee cherries to eat. Mm -hmm. Every time they can select around 20 to 30 percent of the cherries that we gave them. So, uh, that's why we have to select the red only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here this is organic because the farmer uh, wanna have it organic or is it just because they don't wanna they don't need to use uh, chemical? Well, uh, actually we don't need to use chemicals. Okay. But uh, for all the farms, you know, when you want to make more coffee, you need fertilizers. Mm. But with That's our farm be here, because uh, we wanna just keep it like organic, is it good for the weasel when okay. eat the coffee? Mm -hmm. So actually, we do not got lots of cherries actually mm. <laughs> compared to other farms. But you prefer, yeah, rather the the quality uh, as a yeah, as a quantity. Yeah, it's about quality. Mm. Mm. Besides, you know, like I told you before, the weasel to eat coffee like twice a week only, so mm. we don't eat much coffee. Six p.m. They wake up and that's the end of the feeding time here, and the main food for them is chicken soup and bananas. Mm. Mm. Um, in the nature, they can eat almost everything, like uh, grass. Um, small animals like squirrels, snakes, rats, oh. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, their favorite food is chicken. So that's why we make the chicken porridge here for them. And also, we feed them bananas. Mm -hmm. In the season, like right now, of the coffee, you know. So we feed them like Monday with chicken soup, Tuesday with bananas, mm -hmm. Wednesday with coffee. So okay. uh, tonight, they have chicken soup, and then tomorrow, they will have coffee. Oh. And uh, on the day we feed them coffee, the farmers will harvest the coffee in the morning and then we feed them uh, in the afternoon, you know, so the cherry would be very fresh. Uh, okay. And if we let the cherries overnight, they get a bad smell and then the weasel will not eat them. <laughs> okay. Mm. Well, they eat just around 20 to 30 percent of the cherries we gave them. So the rest, we will select again the good ones to make organic coffee here. And, well, so all of the bad ones, we will use them like compost for the farm here, so they got like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, natural fertilizer. Yeah. How many of them are, are there? Well, in yeah. this farm, we keep 40 weasels for visiting. 40? Yeah, right now they are just 30 inside here, because 10 weasels that are threatened in a smaller area. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, we got another farm in Hiroshima City. So ah. In total, we got over 200 measles. But um, this farm we open for visitors, so we can keep going here. Mm. Mm. This is very quiet for you, right? Uh, if you come here on the day that you copy, you can see how the easy copy show is, uh. how it passed around, you know. Mm. But that just happened like twice a week only. Uh -huh. yeah. We will dry them under the sun since we do not use machine, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can see it right out there. We are drying a lot of these on that table. Mm -hmm. And then after drying them, we will select again the good ones by hands to roast. And this is the final product. Well, usually, right here, when we roast the coffee, we will just roast the pure beans. There's no uh, like oil, butter, you know, or other things that just like pure beans, and then you keep a share when we roast them so that Can we our smell? beans are totally different from others. Mm. Mm. Yeah, smell I can very smell strong. it from here. Yeah. yeah, it was just roasted two days ago. Mm -hmm. so mm. with fresh coffee. Yeah. Uh, every week we would just roast the coffee like uh, two times or three times, so we always get fresh coffee. Mm. Nice. So Lovely. we don't need to use preservatives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you only use the dry method for under the sun, or do you also wash them? Uh, we wash them first, mm -hmm. and then we dry them under the sun, okay. and after that we select again a good ones for hands, and okay. we roast them. So to have a global experience and to taste different kind of coffee, we choose to have like black coffee, so coffee without anything, any sugar, any milk, and we also choose to have the egg coffee, which is also a specialty coming from Hanoi, and that is now also in many many coffee places all around Vietnam so they're gonna use raw eggs to make this coffee an important thing about this coffee is that it costs 200,000 dong which is about 10 dollars for just 10 grams of coffee so imagine it's about 1,000 dollars per kilo when you compare this to other kind of coffee it's really like a super super expensive cool coffee but still, it's very famous in the region, and this is actually the most expensive one in Vietnam. So you understand why they don't need to sell a lot of coffee in this coffee shop. And that's why they choose organic Arabica coffee to give those coffee cherry to the Western. Now we are back to our accommodation, a place that we rent for the weekend. Uh, actually, we came here initially to spend Christmas and I wanted also to uh, go to this uh, farm and check uh, which kind of coffee they have because I know this coffee is quite famous, uh, the way they are preparing and the way they are making it uh, and it's quite uh, well known for the tourists. So that's why I wanted through this video to be an illustration for your guys to see all the kind of coffee we have in Vietnam. As the owner of the place say, uh, their coffee farm is located as 1.5 thousand meter high. That's why they could grow uh, organically without using any fertilizer, uh, Arabica coffee bean. So this is a trend that start to be more and more uh, common in Vietnam to have farmers that are uh, educated about this. And of course, because they're coffee place is well known for tourists uh, they prefer to focus on the quality rather than on quantity and that's why for them it's, it's still a way for them to do business and to have uh, tourists coming recently uh, every day to their coffee place and to enjoy uh, this kind of coffee so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope it was an illustration for you guys to see again what's the kind of coffee you find in Vietnam if you want to learn more about this, you can check the other video I made uh, where I interview a specialty coffee expert uh, from the Specialty Coffee Association in Vietnam. And we talk about the different aspects of the coffee bean, uh, Arabica, Robusta, the way uh, farmers are processing those beans and also how you can source quality premium bean in Vietnam. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.